Well, hello internet and welcome back to another episode of our Jove's Dev Chunks. In this tutorial, we're going to cover understanding pyramid programming using loops. In the previous tutorial, we already understood the basic concept of how these pyramids work and how to program them in a basic programming language like C. Today, we're going to just touch upon some more advanced pyramids similar to the ones in the previous chapter. So let's look at them. These are the two pyramids we're going to face in this chapter. They almost look similar with a slight difference and that difference is represented here with SP. Those SP stands for spaces. You see, in the previous examples we studied, there were just the stars. But in this case, we see that first we have the spaces, then we have the stars. The rest of the concept is exactly the same. We have the combination of rows and columns. It is just like a table with a specific pattern to be printed. But now you see, if you concentrate or observe carefully, the spaces in the table are also a pattern. Let me help you visualize it. You see? You can see a triangle formed by those spaces. In the first row we have four spaces, then it decrements to three, then two, then one. And in the other case, it is just the vice versa. We have the one space, then we have two, then three, then four. So actually what is happening is, in each row, we are actually conducting two tasks. Unlike the previous examples, where we just had the task of performing the pattern or logically deducing the pattern of printing the stars. In this case we have two tasks. The first task is to deduce the logic to print the number of spaces. And after the spa number of spaces have been printed, the other task is to deduce the logic to print the number of stars. So exactly that way will we go about it. In the outer loop that controls the number of rows, we are going to create two new loops. Unlike the other examples in which we just w needed one loop. In this case we are going to need two loops. One loop will be controlling the number of spaces, the other loop will be controlling the number of stars. So if you look closely, the number of spaces, the pattern to print the number of spaces can easily be deduced. You see, the maximum number of rows here is equal to 5. And as we can easily notice, in the first row we have 4 stars, that is 1 less than 5. In the second row we have 3 spaces, that is 2 less than 5. So we can easily find out the number of spaces in any row just by subtracting that row number by the maximum number of spaces that is in the first row it's 5 minus 1 that is 4 in the second row is 5 minus 3 that 5 minus 2 I'm sorry 5 minus 2 that is 3 and similarly for all the cases and in the second example we see that in the first row we have no spaces in the second row we have one space in the third row we have two spaces that is row number minus one so that is a simple logic to deduce the number of spaces so let's not waste time and jump back right into our text editor I'm using sublime text and in order to save time I have already written the program but I'm going to explain it to you include studio.h we are just importing the header file then we use a main function it is a in type so we return zero what we are doing inside is this is the outer loop that controls the rows we start from zero we go up to five that is zero one two three four we have five rows then as soon as we enter the first row that is zeroth row 
we define s equals to i that is equal to 0 and goes up to less than 4 this is the number of spaces and we go from 0 1 2 3 so there are four spaces in the first row which is correct and we print those spaces using a simple printer as soon as the number of spaces have been printed we need to print the stars so we start with 0 and we go up to the rowth number that is i make sure you put this equal to there and we print those using these stars simple and as soon as both the tasks are completed and each row is completed we need to shift the line by printing a line character or the slash in in order to change the line that's it we go to the terminal I have saved this file as pyramid.c we go to the desktop and let me show you here I have my file pyramid.c I'm going to just compile it using GCC compiler pyramid.c and I'm going to output it as hello and it has been we need to put this and you see our pyramid has been printed well in the next case when we need stars and rows and stuff we are going to see another example using this let me just raise it that is not of the thing so this control the number of rows and it is similar it goes from 0 one two three four so there are five rows then it comes in for the number of spaces to be managed in the other case we saw that the number of spaces was one less than the number the rowth number so s equals to zero we start with a zero and first row you, if you remember we had no spaces so in the first case it is always less than i in the first case s will be zero i will be zero so no space will be printed and it will jump back to this star printing row in this case we start with i and go up to less than five that is we go from zero one two three four so that is number of times five so it will print five stars after each row is over we shift the line by just printing a blank line again when it goes here when s equals to zero i equals to one now this time in the second row it is going to print one space so you see the logic is coming up quite correctly just let us just check it you need to clear the screen and uh, i'm going to compile my pyramid 2.c as hello2 hello2 and you see oops we have got a pyramid so I would encourage you to try out a few pyramids on your own and do like and share and comment for any queries or suggestions thank you for watching